all good. All right. Good morning, everyone. Dajatzal. It is Michael, your friendly neighborhood food tour guide here with another episode about Taiwanese bakeries. Today we are at. I am at. We 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 are at. The people who you don't ever see on the camera are at. Do do do. 85 degree bakery cafe the original u.s location in irvine california um because i think of all the taiwanese bakeries out there jj bakery is very popular in san gabriel valley and southern california but 85 degree c bakery is now known all over the world it's probably one of the most famous and popular of the Taiwanese bakeries. They've got locations all across America and in China, um, but of course they originated in Taiwan and not as a bakery, believe it or not, they originated as a coffee shop, uh, which is actually where they got their name from. 85 degrees Celsius uh, is the supposed, supposed, proper brewing temperature for a hot cup of coffee and of course in america we don't know celsius too well but 85 degrees celsius is approximately 185 degrees fahrenheit the formula is not at 100 it's much more complicated than that but uh supposedly that is the proper brewing temperature for coffee and so that is how 85 degrees celsius 85 degrees c came up with their name and so if you ever visit the 85 degree c cafes in taiwan you'll notice that they're a lot smaller because they're little cafes and coffee shops um, and they don't have such a large spacious um spacious space <laughs> uh, for all of the breads and pastries and cakes uh, like the stores in America. So I wanted to show you guys a couple things. Go ahead. Yeah, right now. A um, couple things actually. Maybe a dozen. This looks like a, a 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13. A baker's dozen. I've got a baker's dozen of 85 degree bread. 85 degree C bakery cafe bread for you all but of course we had to start with their most famous thing is their coffee this is the 85 degree uh ice huh? sea, salt. sea salt foam iced coffee which is what they were famous for um and probably one of the first <laughs> parking lot bugs uh one of the first coffee shops taiwanese beverage retailers that started putting sea salt and this like foamy stuff sea salt foam cream on top of their beverages and it's supposed to be uh stemming from let's not get hit today not today um stemming from the also alleged supposed taiwanese practice of putting sea salt or salt on uh, fruit to enhance the flavor i have never really done that i don't think my family's ever done that family ever do that no and our two other taiwanese americans off to the side over here also say they don't really do that so i don't know could be a marketing gimmick but successful it has worked and uh mm. oh yeah that's salty at least the first the first initial taste and flavor i feel like i'm gonna get hit by a car <laughs> um has a little bit of that saltiness and then later it's just nice and icy cold coffee ish not very sweet and not very bitter black either uh 85 do we sh do we shake it or you just drink it like you just shake it you gotta shake it as I drip all of the dew off onto the bread below. This is fantastic. All right. Um, 85 Degrees uses Guatemalan coffee beans, which uh, in a next episode, now that we're talking about coffee and bread, I will tell you guys more about Taiwanese coffee beans. That'll be, check that out later. But for right now, let's talk about some bread. Mm. What are you having, Ashley? I don't know, mushrooms. <laughs> Mushroom cheese wheat bread. Alright, so actually let's get to let's get to that in a little bit. Uh two I would say of the most popular things that are sold at 85 degrees, along with their sea salt coffee, of course, is their coffee bread. Look at this. It's so beautiful. 
it's so like smooth and supple looking with a nice crust on the bottom. Why are you laughing at my description? Um, and I think, uh, I don't, I don't know if there's actually any coffee there, but I remember in middle school when we made coffee cake, there wasn't any coffee in the coffee cake. It was just that it went paired really well with coffee. No, I, I think there's a little, the white part doesn't have any coffee in it, but I think the crusty bottom, yes, crusty bottom has a little espresso flavoring. It. I would say a good one to have with a coffee. I'm just gonna chew and waste more time on camera. All right, the other one that people really like is this brioche, the brioche bread, the loaf of brioche from 85C is, is really, really nice because brioche usually it's like a very, very soft, pillowy soft bread, right? But what I love about the 85 degrees brioche is that there's a beautiful crust on top. And not only is there, is there this like nice golden crust on top, there's also, oh, it smells like butter. <laughs> that's awful. It's nice like milky crust on the side. It almost tastes like a like if you had like condensed milk and baked it dry that's what it tastes like on the outside this is lovely this is really really nice i want to say you can definitely smell all the butter that's emanating from the bread and one of the cool things about taiwanese bread versus a european or french style bread taiwanese bread usually doesn't need another padding of butter on top because all the butter is inside and it's already so warm, pillowy, and soft. So you can, if you want, to add more butter, but this is already very nice. <laughs> all right, more bread. I wanted to show this one to you guys because I was not a Taro fan. This is real. Remember when your mom told you not to chew with your mouth open? Or talk with your mouth open while chewing? Not a good example. Okay. I was never really a taro fan until trying the taro swirl and the taro marble from 85 Degree Bakery here. Yes. By the way, the bread at 85 is quite large or relatively large compared to traditional Taiwanese buns and breads. These are not personal individual size. Recommend sharing this, but this I think, ooh, 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 ooh. look at the taro inside. Actual taro. So this by the way is the actual color of taro. It's not always super purple. Uh, that's more like ube, but I think if you have some of the taro marble bread, this middle part, if I remember what it tastes like, it tastes like a really lovely like mashed potato with a little taro flavor. If you know what taro tastes like, that's not helpful. That's not helpful, but this is really nice though. This is what got me into taro right here. More things. All right. Famous breads at 85. The berry tail. Blueberry. If you got the berry, you got mango. This is not what I meant to do. <laughs> this is. Okay, either way. Why is the mango one so much bigger than the berry one? <laughs> they're never they're never supposed to be even, right? I okay, alright, I'm not the right territory. Moving on. Speaking of giant breads, this is even bigger. This is, look how big this thing is. Chocolate chip uh, bun. There's also a chocolate bowl in there and then a 
dino choco bun, which literally looks like a like an ostrich dinosaur egg, but like chocolate all over. But this looks fantastic. Uh, and and now that we're talking, now that we're talking about chocolate chips, <laughs> clearly chocolate chips are a very traditional Taiwanese ingredient. Um, but <laughs> it's just raining sugar and bread all over the place. Um, another, oh, this is good. Oh. But who doesn't like chocolate, who doesn't like chocolate chips? Only psychopaths don't <laughs> like chocolate chips. Um, one of the coolest things about 85 Degree Bakery is that not only do they have their traditional buns, like You'll find a red bean bun in there, taro, um, but a lot of their, their, a lot of their variety is contemporary and they get pretty creative and I think that's what's keeping them relevant. So not only do they have a chocolate chip bun, but also this is not a lump of coal. This is their choco roll or choco bun that, uh, also filled with chocolate chips in the middle. This reminds me a lot of one of uh, their discontinued breads that I used to really love, which was their squid ink roll. Do you guys remember that? Oh, so good. It looked just like this, except that it was garlic and cheese and a little bit of like calamari in the middle. Wow, that was delicious. I mean, this is delicious too. I can imagine if you took this home and put it in the toaster and had the chocolate chips melt the middle. Oh. Fantastic. All right. Speaking of contemporary style breads, this is what Ashley was eating earlier. The, do you want to come say hi? Come and say hi. Welcome the queen of Irvine, <laughs> my very good friend Ashley, who I went to college with, is now in Orange County, driving around, being very <laughs> OC housewife, eating breads, <laughs> drinking 85 degrees. Say hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Ashley, by the way, has a, uh, what do you want to call it? Skincare? <laughs> beauty blog. A, a beauty blog called... <laughs> Glow Do It Up. Okay, well, you know what? <laughs> we'll leave some information down below so that we don't embarrass Ashley anymore. <laughs> but Ashley, what do you love about the whole wheat mushroom bread. This is probably one of my favorite savory breads from 85 Degrees. Mm -hmm. I love mushrooms. Yeah. So this bread has plenty of mushrooms on uh -huh. it. Uh, it's filled with lots of cheese, which is also lots something I love. Lots of cheese. Look at, look at the little extra crusty melted cheese on the side. And then it has like a, a slight layer of like mayo or something to kind of like Mm. You know, yeah. finish off the top. It's just really good taste, and then it's like whole wheat bread, so you don't feel as guilty about eating it. So it's good. The whole wheat <laughs> and all of the cheese together. <laughs> we call that balance, right? <laughs> That's called balance. Yes. 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 All right. I think you know you're in the sun. Oh. Just this one is one of Ashley's favorite breads. This is actually one of my favorite breads too. And I just love, it's almost like a very thick flat bread um, with just a very nice texture, right? It's soft in the middle, it's crusty cheese on top. I could eat this all day. It was it like a- It tastes even better in the toaster. Oh, it tastes even better in the yeah, toaster, yeah. Warm it up. And I would say, um, would you describe this as a mushroom pizza without the tomato sauce? Yes. I'm <laughs> just making it. It's my description. Do you agree, Ashley? Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay, bye. Right, cool. Oh. 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 Okay. you. You want to stay? <laughs> stay. And... No, that's okay. Bye, guys. Okay. <laughs> All the next breads all have cheese on them. Really super cool. You can have... I'm going to stop eating this. The hot dog cheese bread. Extra little cheese crisp on the side. Uh, the difference with 85's hot dog cheese bread is that they add a little bit of ketchup in there. Not like other bakeries. And then I had to go and rebuy 
this one because I ate it while I was waiting for you guys to show up. It's just so good. And I had Steph try some of this and immediately before telling her what kind of bread it was, she was like, ooh, garlic. Yes, this is the 85 garlic cheese bread that I ate. I <laughs> finished before starting this video shoot. Very delicious. And then, jalapeno cheese, clearly. Also very traditional Taiwanese jalapenos, right? Just like the chocolate chips. No. Um, but also something I think that they do really well, which is making contemporary, non-traditional breads. Which means, last but not least, Elote bread! A tribute to the Los Angeles Elote Man in Las Calles de Los Angeles. <laughs> Not great. Alright. Uh, here's your baker's dozen. No, that's a dozen. This makes it a baker's dozen. This is... Alright. We're going to do an episode one of these days just on egg tarts and how it started in Portugal and ended up in Macau and then went to Hong Kong and then Taiwan and then Japan. But this is the fusion version of the original Portuguese pastéis de nata and the Japanese cheese tart. Somewhere in the middle of all of that was a fusion Taiwanese-Japanese cream egg tart because this, when you bite, so the... Breathe. The crust reminds me of a Portuguese pastéis de nata. It is marketed as a tan ta, an egg tart, like a Cantonese-style egg tart by a Taiwanese bakery. But when you bite into it, it is, has a layer of mochi in the, on the bottom. So Portuguese-style crust, Japanese mochi right here, some kind of Chinese-Taiwanese fusion custardy thing all together in here. Now, that is your baker's dozen. I think we've heard enough of me talking today. That's it. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Please um, like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> and stay tuned for the next video. It is going to be about Taiwanese coffee using Taiwanese beans with Taiwanese pastries. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm gonna slowly enjoy this. And thank you, Ashley and Steph, for coming to enjoy pastries in the parking lot with me. <laughs>